You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Shouldering upward into the clouds, looking out over the plains of four countries of Europe, are the great tumbled ranges of the Alps. Birthplace of the wind, a Roman poet once called them, those high mountain valleys of Switzerland. And so they are even today, birthplace of the wind. But when the man called X is concerned, they can also be the birthplace of death, which is exactly what two men are talking about in a hotel room in Paris. No, sir, Ken, the whole thing's a frame-up, and it's too dangerous. You ought to know that. Maybe so, Chief. What else have we got to work on? Yeah, millions of dollars in counterfeit United States bills pouring into France and Italy, and after ten days over here, we haven't been able to turn up a lead. This may be the lead. Chief, I know von Ormstein. I know his work. He made the plates these bills are being printed from. There's no question about it. Well, that still doesn't mean you've got to accept his invitation to Switzerland and get yourself killed. No, it's just that I think he's conceited enough to believe he can get me up there and convince me he's really going straight. Well, you know he might be at that. The Swiss authorities didn't find a thing when they raided him. He never has any visitors and never goes anywhere himself. Ken, maybe he has retired. You want to bet? Well, he seems to be a pillar of the community up there. Even a check on his outgoing mail hasn't turned up anything. Outgoing, eh? If he is the brain behind this counterfeiting, then how's he doing it? That's exactly what I'm going to Borlach in Switzerland to find out. I don't know. If there were any other way, I... Say... I can't figure what the Sam Hill happened to Zellschmidt. Oh, he may turn up yet. Yeah, but you sent him over here two weeks ago to contact some of his crooked pals. He's apparently dropped out of sight. Yeah. Well, I've got to get on out to the airport. Then you're still going to see von Ormstein. It's our best bet. Well, it's our only bet. Chief, I'll call you from Switzerland. <laughs> I'd like to pick up my ticket, please. Reservation on the next flight to Geneva. The name's Ken Thurston. Oui, Monsieur Thurston. The plane to Switzerland. I will for it right Wait a away. second. Monsieur? I'll be right back. But, Monsieur, I do not understand. Well, pray God. Uh, Mr. Rex. How do you like Paris by this time? Mr. Thurston, I was just going to call you or, or wire you or something. Only right now I can't... Pagan? Be... What's that package you're trying to hide behind you? Mr. Rex, I'm innocent. No matter what anybody says, I'm innocent. How should I know it's counterfeit money in this little package? I'll bite. How do you know? Well, I... I uh, Mr. Thurston, you've got to believe me. I don't know no, nothing from nothing. Where did you get the package? From a guy named Smith at a little French hotel by the Swiss border. And right now I've got to go and deliver it to the a... The only place you're going is Switzerland with me. You can't be trusted alone. But I've got to deliver this first. My dear friend Pierre Cornet is going to be awful mad if I don't. Cornet? Uh-uh. Yeah, mm-hmm. You know him, Mr. X? Pagan, Corner is the only one of the gang we've been able to track down in ten days. Oh, then he's been arrested. Uh, you got him? No. Somebody else got him. We found him in his room last night. Stabbed to death. Mr. Thurston, how soon can we get to Switzerland? gentlemen is my study, which of course you've already seen. Yeah. Nice little place you've got here, Mr. Van Ormstein. My thanks, Mr. Zellschmidt. This completes the tour then, is that it? In a manner of speaking, yes, Mr. Thurston. 
Uh, please consider yourself at liberty, however, to look through any part of the grounds or through the chalet itself at any time you wish. Thank you, Mr. von Ornstein. I only wish to convince you that I am no more than I seem, a man who has now retired from what may have been at times a somewhat evil life. I see. Yeah. By the way, I've been noticing your radio over there. Quite a powerful transmitter, isn't it? Oh, well, fairly so. Uh, as you know, I've always been interested in amateur radio, though I seldom find time to use it anymore. I'm glad to hear that. A man could open it up once in a while and send a quick message in code without much chance being found out, hmm? Yes, yes, I suppose one could. Hmm. Just look at that view, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> Mountains all over the place. Waterfall. <laughs> Boy, what a spot for a vacation. How did you happen to pick Switzerland, Mr. von Ornstein, when uh, you decided to retire? Well, it's a beautiful place and uh, out of the way. Uh, my sister has owned this estate for many years, you know. Your sister? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to meet her. Certainly. I'll go find her now, if you'll excuse me. I'll only be a moment. Pagon, get over there by the door. Listen, for anybody coming. Okay, Mr. X. What are you going to do? Take a look at this telephone. Von Holmstein was listening on it the first time he came in here. When he saw me, he hung up without saying a word. I'll be screwy about that. Mm-hmm. Line goes under the edge of the desk here. You found something, maybe? Yeah. The way switch. Let's see what it does. Probable light snowfall to be expected in the Jungfrau sector after 9 p.m. tonight. Mm -hmm. Present wind velocities over the station are as follows. At 1,500 meters, none. At 2,000 meters, 8 to 12 kilometers per hour. Direction variable to all points. Predict falling velocities of wind oh. at all. You are Miss von Olmstein, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am Nashka. Mr. von Olmstein is my brother. What are you doing here? We're visiting your brother. Oh, you shouldn't. You should go away now. That would be the best thing. Yes, really, it would. What? Oh, uh... come now, Miss Nashka. Go away and miss all the lovely things to see around here. Oh, yes. Yes, they are lovely, aren't they? Have you seen them all? The, the covered bridge and the rock garden and the weather station? Well, the weather station? Where's that? Up there on top of the ridge, Mr. Thurston. <gasps> Mr. Van Olmstein. Any reason why you should be particularly interested in it? Oh, I'm interested in meteorology, that's all. Any reason why I shouldn't be? <laughs> no, no, of course not. Anashka, I've been looking for you. Uh, Mr. Thurston's a kind of a policeman, you know. Uh, you mustn't tell him any of our guilty secrets. Oh, I, I've only been talking about the, the beautiful scenery here. Yes. And, and our waterfall, Mr. Thurston. I call it the Rhine Maiden. You must forgive her imagination, Mr. Thurston. Its real name is the Zorchialen. But I like... Rhine Maiden so much better. It's easier to pronounce, too. Mr. Von Olmstein, how does one go about getting up to the weather station? Well, there's a trail leading out of the valley here, though I hardly think you would find it interesting. Oh, I don't know. I can't think of any better place to find out which way the wind's blowing. Gradient, Mr. Thurston. 300 meters over our heads, the air is standing in a very dead calm. I happen to be the. the what is the matter? Hmm? One other thing, I'm listening. Only I'm still surprised at finding a girl up here, Miss Rayner, running this station all alone. Oh, yes, but I love it. It is the most beautiful view in the world out across those peaks. I can see half of Switzerland from here. Ha! <laughs> Makes me dizzy just to look down. Yes. <laughs> Would you like to see some of the wind maps? Yeah, very much. Yeah. Here we are. This happens to be one of the very few spots in the world where wind velocity and direction is entirely predictable. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, and quite dependable, too. You see this one here. It is a wind that blew steadily for three days earlier in the week straight into eastern France. I see. Miss Rayner, what about reports? You phone them in somewhere? Oh, yes, yes, to Geneva four times a day. Uh -huh. Any chance the phone line could be tapped? But uh, I... I do not understand, Mr. Thurston. Who would wish to do anything like that? Miss Rayner, aren't you forecasting a dead calm overhead for the next 48 hours? Yes, but... Good. Uh... Now, listen. I want you to contact the authorities in Geneva and give them my name. What? Ask for their permission to cooperate with certain instructions that I'll give you later. You got it? Yes, yes, but I fail to see what... Never you... mind, you will. Come on, Pagan. Huh? Uh, 
running up mountains, running down mountains. I wish I knew what was going on around here, Mr. Thurston. Getting an appetite for dinner, Pagan? Huh? Yeah. Should be ready pretty soon. I'm afraid dinner will be delayed, gentlemen. Mr. Look, he's got a gun. Yes. Yes, I've been waiting for you. Step inside. Well, Mr. Von Armstein, things seem to be moving out into the open. I'll take your gun, Mr. Thurston. Thank you. Very clever of you to find my little arrangement with a telephone, but you should have remembered I might be using it when you had Miss Rayner call Geneva. Yeah, maybe I should. Well, the next move seems to be up to you. I've made it already. We are waiting now for the arrival of the police. The police? Where do they fit in? As a respected member of the community, I felt it my duty to call them. You see, Mr. Thurston, I happened to look into my sister Nashka's room. Found it ransacked. Blood on the carpet. I'm charging you with murder. And now we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. When Ken accepted von Ornstein's invitation to Switzerland, he was reasonably certain of the man's guilt in flooding France and Italy with counterfeit U.S. bills. The only question being how the scheme was worked. He was certain, too, that von Ornstein was dangerous. And now the duel has come out into the open, and a criminal charge has been filed against Ken, the charge of murder. This way, monsieur. I have the police conveyance waiting there at the edge of the driveway. You are pleased to walk ahead of me. Okay, Inspector. Right now, you're the man with the brass hat. Mr. Thurston, this little gendarme is going to throw us in the who's gone. Hey, what's the big idea? We didn't kill anybody, did we? Wait a minute. Huh? That waterfall. I think my own Stein's sister was trying to tell me something about that waterfall. So help me, that's got to be it. What are you talking about, Mr. Thurston? I don't get it. Here we are, monsieur. We're pleased to stand there until I unlock the conveyance. Look at it. Nothing but a dog catcher's truck. Pago. Pago. Yeah? Do you want to make a quick hundred bucks? In real money? Yeah, now listen. Tell this cop you want to confess to the murder. I'll straighten it out later. Well, I don't know if I... Pago, should... I've got to get up to that weather station and enter the waterfall. I'll go ahead. Well, it's, it's only for the money, you understand. <sighs> You're pleased to enter, monsieur. Mr. Inspector, sir, I want to confess. Huh? I done it all by myself. Monsieur... You are the murderer? Sure. Tell you all about it down at the headquarters. Now, Mr. Thurston didn't have nothing to do with it. See? I'm climbing in with my own free will. Lock the door and take me. Well, congratulations, Inspector. A confessed murderer. This will mean promotion for you. Uh, does Monsieur really think so? Oh, sure. Aha. Uh -huh. Stand back. I must take this killer to justice immediately. Hey, don't forget to fix it up, Mr. Thurston. Hey, what did they do to murder in this country, anyhow? I'm not sure, Pagan, but I think it involves a firing squad. What? Oh, no! Let me out of here! Mr. Zane! And if I understand you correctly, Mr. Thurston, you wish me to send this false weather report over the telephone in place of the real one. Is that it? That's right, Miss Rayner. The people in Geneva said to follow my instructions, didn't they? But this report is not true. It is not true. It predicts a 40-kilometer wind blowing into northern Italy for the next 48 hours. Actually, there will be a dead calm during that time. I know, but there's a good reason for it. Now, excuse me. I've got a date with the waterfall. <laughs> Pagan, I thought you were in jail. <laughs> I only agreed to confess I wasn't going to get myself shot. Well, how'd you get away? Ah, with my special Zellschmidt skeleton key. The lock on that birth cage was a cinch. Hey, where are we going now, Mr. Thurston? Von Ornstein's sister was really trying to tip me off. We are going through this waterfall. Huh? Through that? She kept calling it the Rhine Maiden. And the Rhine Maidens are best known as guardians of gold. They kept it underwater. So, wait till I get this flashlight under my raincoat. Mr. Rex, I, I hope you know you're what you're doing. Walking through a waterfall. Well, we'll soon find out. Take a deep breath now. All right. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Where are we in now, anyhow? I don't know. Let's try the flashlight. There. Mr. Thurston, look, it's a cave. 
A cave in the back of the falls. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Complete with the turbine generator op operated by the water peg on. Yeah. The printing press. And there, there's where she's been making that no good money. Yeah. I don't see any, though. No. Looks like the floor's been dug up here. Hey, uh, what are all these gadgets piled up over here? Weather balloons. Balloons? Yeah. Special kind with an automatic timer. Controls the height and the time in the air. And look here. A small built-in radio transmitter to send out a continuous signal. Quite a scheme. Hey, uh, how about letting me in on the lowdown, Mr. X? How does he do it? It's not too hard to figure out now by tapping the phone line from the weather station. Von Ormstein gets a continuous report of air movements across the ridge here. No, no kidding. Whenever a favorable wind was forecast, he took some counterfeit money onto a balloon, set the control for the right time and altitude, and then release it. Probably after dark. Oh, but, but how could an agent over in France or, or, or in Italy even find the balloon when it did come down? That's where the automatic radio on it came in. The agent could use a portable receiver and find the balloon without much trouble. I doubt if he lost many shipments. Not any, as a matter of fact, Mr. Thurston. Von Olsen! Oh, me! Put your hands up, gentlemen. Huh? Very clever, Mr. Thurston, though you really should have looked around the cave before you became careless. One thing bothers me, Von Olsen. What happened to the plates you've been printing from? I sent them out by balloon an hour ago, right after I heard Miss Rayner's last weather report. You see, they might have provided, shall we say, evidence. I see. Well, where do we go from here? You and your friend aren't going anywhere. This cave is the end of the road. Uh-huh. What's the plan? I'm going outside, Thurston, and drop the gates of the little dam you may have noticed out there. Fine, go on. It diverts a part of the water to flood this cave and seal off the entrance. Mr. Thurston, he's going to drown us like rats. Yes. Gentlemen, I bid you adieu. Oh, oh me. Come on, Mr. Rex. We've got to get out of here. Pagan, he'd shoot you before you got clear of the waterfall. So we better... Listen. <laughs> Move back. Here it comes. But we got to do something. All we can do is run or be drowned. So come on, let's run. I can understand your concern, but I've already told you that Ken Thurston and Mr. Zellschmidt haven't been heard from since they left to go hiking two days ago. Yeah, but Ormstein, now suppose you listen to me. I warned Ken about that invitation of yours before he left here. If you don't have him on this phone in 30 minutes, I'm coming up there and tear that joint apart. I can understand how you must feel, sir. As a matter of fact, I was beginning to worry a little myself. I'm planning to send out a search party. Oh, search party? It's no job for a search party. You know what's happened to him. I'm sorry, sir, but I really don't know what to say to you. I After all, you let me talk to him. Thurston. Huh? What did you say? <laughs> You thought you bumped us off, didn't you? <laughs> Pigeon. I'll take that phone for Norm's time. Thanks. Keep your hands up. Go on, move back. Right. Hello, Chief. Ken, what the Sam Hill's going on up there? Never mind. Everything's okay now. I'll call you later. Yes, but why didn't you... How did you get out? Oh, the cave opens on the surface a couple of miles back of the ridge. I thought it might when I noticed a current of air blowing through. All right. So you've broken up my scheme. But I got the plates sent off, and without them, you have no case against me. I have the plates. You're bluffing. They should have been picked up by my agent in Italy nearly two days ago. Yeah, and they might have been. If you hadn't sent them up in a dead calm. What? Oh, the balloon went up all right and came down over here on the ridge about two miles away. Pagel and I picked it up after we got out of the cave this morning. But the weather report. You can't always trust the weather report. Especially when it's been tampered with. You still won't convict me. You can't prove I ever used the plates. Somehow I don't think the court's going to worry too much about counterfeiting. They'll be trying you for murder. My sister? <laughs> you can't file a murder charge without a body, Thurston. I got a pretty good idea that when we drain that cave and dig up the floor, we'll have a body for Nornstein. You want to bet? Are you... You're oh, not going to take me even if I... Go back, you... Ha-ha, you... <laughs> right on the button, Mr. X. Colder than a mountain climber's nose. Ha! <laughs> well... Well, that takes care of that. Yeah, Pagan, that takes care of that. Until the next time. And there'll be a next time. Other men like this one. Men who can live right in the shadow of eternity. Look up every day of their lives at that clean white snow on the peaks. And still wallow in greed and prejudice. Hate. 
What's the matter with us, anyway? Aren't we ever going to grow up? And our frigid air star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And I'd like you to know that Carter tonight was played by Kathy Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, America's production depends on steel. Jobs depend on it. And steel depends on scrap metal. Help increase the production of the things you need. Help to keep employment high. Collect scrap iron and steel around home. Turn it into your local drive or call your local scrap dealer. Right away, huh? Now, next week... We're doing a story called Passport to Danger. I think it'll really keep you on the edge of your seats. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as pig on Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Prisoner's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.